in. So he is here um, with a couple of his local guests. And there's a team of just wonderful supporters that are here. This is a very first time we've done this. And of course, we have this beautiful facility, which we're going to introduce you to. But let me just ask those of you who have been supporters and helpers and set uppers and leaders and so on, would you guys just stand up so you know who to thank? Fabio and Betsy and you guys, all of you, please thank you. None of these things happen alone, and so this is a new, a new experience for us. And uh, if this, uh, what we're doing with this format is <clears throat> we are beginning with a very non-branded introduction to the concepts of wellness. And you're going to hear some stories from many of us. We will transition into some of the choices that many of us have made career-wise and product-wise, but the first part of our presentation is really non-branded, and we'd like to have an opportunity to just talk about why it's important for us to do what we can to be healthy proactively with ourselves and our families. And if there's any of this information that you feel can be valuable in any communities that you have, if you're doing presentations for the scouts or the church or the homeowners or the, you know, any place else, um, please contact us and just tell whoever invited you here. So um, next slide, Jeremy. I would like to especially thank our hosts here at the Vineyard. Um, first of all, Wanda Garcia, who's back there talking, but Wanda, would you, yes. Um, Wanda is an RN, she is uh, personally a health and wellness coach, and uh, I can privately say she also helps to take care of Dr. Pastor Mario. So, also Dr. Mario, who has more backgrounds than you can possibly imagine. And so um, with that, I would like to have the opportunity to introduce both of them with thanks to them for um, supporting us and finding this hospitality, this wonderful spot, which you can see can grow into being lots of other things. So please welcome um, Dr. Mario Garcia. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Um, many of you know my story, so I won't go into that. But I just want to welcome you on behalf of our lead pastor, Kevin Fisher, and our lead team. Um, my name is Mario Garcia. I serve as the executive pastor in charge of all operations here. So we welcome you to the vineyard. If you're in town this weekend and you'd like to visit, this is Super Bowl weekend. So in all three services, uh, if you get a chance to go throughout the facilities on the breaks, you're going to see games and a lot of just fun stuff that happens before our service, tonight at 6.15, or tomorrow at 10.30 or 12.15. They're identical services with uh, simultaneous interpretation in Espanol. And so we here like to have fun. We like to be in the community. We uh, just about four weeks ago had a food drive with one of our uh, sponsors, Farm Share, where we fed over 300 families in our parking lot outside. So. We have a sister organization called Miami Vineyard Community Center, and that's our major outreach program. It's also a nonprofit, so we do all those kinds of things. And so today, uh, when Carolyn talked to me about you know having a non-branded, and, and then obviously you're gonna have your own meeting uh, as a community, and we, we hope that we could do more of these to educate the community and invite the community to obviously have an awareness for their families, their kids, and all of their health concerns. And uh, so we've got a pub table over here and some information of our church. We also just launched uh, this past summer because we're always growing, we're always learning. You know anything about me? My wife says, I have more degrees than a thermometer. True. <laughs> True story. Yeah. But anyway, so we just launched uh, a partnership with Southeastern University fully accredited Miami Vineyard University uh, has complete online programs, associate, bachelor's, and master's degree levels. We just launched this past fall. And it's not just about, you know, religious theology and biblical studies. 
there's uh, business administrations, there's digital media, communications, and other things. So if you have uh, young people or people like us who are in this new season, I just had my 65th birthday two weeks ago, guess what? Here we go. So, you know, it's, it's just so important to continue to grow and continue to invest in oneself. And obviously it's an honor and a pleasure to work with Carolyn and her health partner. So thank you very much. Glad you're here. Restrooms are right outside. And uh, sorry, the cafeteria is not open. We have a, a Starbucks kind of vibe going on in our atrium. So if you come to any of the services, that's available in addition to free coffee on the side. So thank you so much. And uh, that's all I got. Appreciate you. We appreciate you. And I can tell some wonderful stories about Dr. Mario and Wanda in addition to being um, having all those multitudinous degrees, um, he has also been very passionately focused in the fitness world, in the fitness life, and has some of his own personal health stories of having um, had some successes. So um, those are just some of the things we get to share. Um, Jeremy, could we go back to the very first slide just so I can talk about that and then we'll start sliding through. Um, our focus today is on creating wellness, and we have three specific focuses of timelines. One of them is raising healthy families, which may begin with prenatal all the way up through how do we take care of our kids. The second focus is for those people, of some of us who are focused on fitness, but having the opportunity to be mentored by Olympians. So in our program today, we are going to welcome on Zoom two Olympians, including one Olympic gold medalist, who um, you'll love her story. She was an Olympic gold medalist in Rio in 2016, and um, she and her husband now have five children. They just welcomed twins six weeks ago. So <clears throat> you're gonna meet her on her fitness journey along with one of our other Olympians. So when we talk about fitness, it can start with being healthy all the way up to the highest level of performance. And then um, the concept of aging gracefully in all of our stages of life. So that's really what our focus is, and hopefully these will be things that can be of value for other people. So, okay, Jeremy, and we, we don't have a remote, so <clears throat> Jeremy and I will be connected. Um, <clears throat> let's start out and talk about what is wellness. Well, <clears throat> it's really living our life consciously in ways that can help us to improve our lives. And so there's no, there's no definition except that, gosh, when we don't have it, it's not, life isn't as great. Um, next slide. So why is it important for us to care about it? Well, there's several reasons. Over 50% of the population, the U.S. population, is dealing with chronic disease. And that's, you know, can be, have all the definitions we can think of. 86% of healthcare costs, which is, you know, everybody's got this sort of creaky, that's me. 86% um, of healthcare costs are attributable to chronic disease. Um, changing behavior in regard to our health habits is difficult and complex, and people don't really understand the change process. So this is a part of what we're looking to do as a community. And many people struggle with poor health and vitality because they may lack the motivation and the knowledge and resources to make those changes. So that's really what our, our program right now is about, okay? So when we talk about health and wellness strategies, I think they're, yeah. So take a look at this continuum. And just take a look at it for a minute. Look at the green slide, the slides down at the bottom and kind of rate yourself. You don't have to show anybody, but rate yourself or be thinking about people for whom this information could be valuable. Are you feeling sort of neutral, no symptoms, you know, um, or are you feeling like you're in good health, pretty regular exercise, or are you in optimal health? 
Or perhaps, are you over on the left side of the scale where um, there are some medical issues, where um, you know there may be a handful of medications and things going on, and be thinking about this for other people also. So next slide. So um, let's see, let me come back to that one, I'm sorry. So um, if you look at the top, the top is where we look a little more carefully because if you look on the left side, those kind of orange, whatever color that is, that's where disease or not great stuff may be developing. But over on the right side is where we may be progressively improving our health. So if we take a look at this as a scale, um, just of what we're looking for to doing what we can to maintain as much of a healthy um, way as we can, okay? So let's talk about some of these strategies for health and wellness. There are probably five lifestyle factors that have been shown, and this is just specifically relating to type 2 diabetes. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but I can tell you that type 2 diabetes for many of us who are not still 17 years old, remember that diabetes used to be very much an ace, a, a, a something that happened to older people. And what's happening now is pre-diabetes and actually juvenile onset diabetes is becoming a lot more common for our kids in school as they get older. Anybody had any experiences of kind of knowing about that? it's gotten younger and younger and younger. And so um, <clears throat> this specifically focuses on type two diabetes. So what are some of the things that are factors? Well, having a healthy diet and environment, and of course we all think it's healthy, but now we can learn a little more. Keeping an ideal body weight, um, being physically active, um, and then avoiding some of the things like smoking and minimizing use of alcohol. And along with alcohol, I would put um, sweetened sodas and things like that, because that's all part of the spectrum of things that may contribute towards um, having diabetes, just as a specific thing, okay? So what are some of the five lifestyle factors that have been shown to reduce this risk? Well, in men, who adopted the five lifestyle factors, they lowered their risk for developing diabetes by 72%. Now, if you think about that, I don't know how much inconvenience there is in the life of a person who, for example, is diabetic and is having to deal with monitoring insulin and blood sugar and trips to the doctor and all that sort of thing. So if that could be avoided, if those are things that are positive, I mean, how great can that be? Secondly, for women who adopted all these lifestyle factors, they can lower their risk of developing diabetes by 84%. Now that's pretty significant just for healthy choices. And so we're not talking about drugs, medication, or anything. We're talking about personal choices, okay? So, problem number one. I love this slide. <laughs> and incidentally, thanks to uh, Dr. Mario with all of his many, many talents, um, the whole core of this presentation is put together by him, probably in his sleep, but anyway. Um, first of all, we're probably not eating right, and there are a lot of reasons for that. Problem number two is even what we think of as healthy food is not as nutritious as it used to be. And those of us who are, you know, over 17 or over 25 or whatever, happen to remember that the food choices that we had are much different, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, okay? So the question is, does commercialism contribute to the poor quality of our food? And maybe to the cravings that we have for sweets. I don't know about you, but if you turn on the television, for any age group, I don't care if it's the kids shows, the cartoons, the Disney, the news channels, the talk shows, whatever it is, 
Does it occur to you how much we are advertised with all of these different kinds of things? And that's what we get to remember if it's for us, for our kids or our grandkids, that's part of what's going on. And some of this may actually create a craving for sweets and the sweets may show up in the labels as things like non um, high fructose corn syrup, which is in almost everything. And those are things that actually create some cravings for a lot of these things. So next one. What are some of the impacts of commercialism in our food? 90% of us depend on commercial interests for our food supply. You know, we go to the store, wherever it is, to Sprouts or Publix or wherever it happens to be. Um, but here's what we get to remember, that over the past few decades, the farmer is easy, is eager to grow two ears of corn in place of one. So what does he do? He uses chemical fertilizers. And so what ends up happening is the effect of some of those chemicals may reduce the nutritional value of the two ears that we're actually getting far below what one ear might have been on its own, but they also bring a higher price. And that is that with all the food processing, almost without exception, profit is gonna determine the method of preparation. And I'll just give you a little side story. A colleague of mine was talking about growing up and having some health issues. And she said, you know what? We grew up right next to the farm. And on the farm, they were spraying. And the spraying was in the air and it was everything that we picked up and ate. Let's have this fresh. But we had an extra dose of whatever those things are. So you begin to imagine what begins to happen to our system. Okay. So problem number three, we're less active, um, physically active. Uh, we're spending more time, you know, in front of these little machines. Um, and if we are less active, we therefore need fewer calories. So. Our sedentary lifestyle then means that all of the nutrients which our body actually needs, therefore have to come from fewer calories. And if we're substituting some of those calories with some sweetened drink or instant something, then you know what happens is we begin to get less and less of what we need. Does this make sense? So, Many of the changes in the late 1980s are impacting the current generations. Hi there, welcome. And this has to do with the contamination of our food supply. And this is something we all need to be aware of. This is not a political conversation. This is a conversation about, about farming, about agriculture, about how laws have changed. And so, for example, in the late 1980s, a number of laws changed that allow things like, you know, the clothes that we had that were supposed to be like flame retardant or something. Those things ended up in our sheets and our pillowcases and our kids' clothes. There was a lot more access to things that have um, those sprays in the, you know, the foods. Um, there have been a number of lawsuits about glyphosate, which, you know, is easy to spray on, round up, but what does it do to us? And so there are a number of changes in our food supply that have actually happened since the 1980s. So if we look at what's happening with our own health and what may be happening with the health of our kids or our grandkids, they are subjected to a lot of these things, which have changed. If you have ever lived outside of the U.S., you will find that that is not all exactly the same thing. <clears throat> there are different sets of regulations of what's allowed in different parts of the world. And so one of the prices that we pay is we've had a lot of these things added. <clears throat> so one of the results of that is an increase in obesity. Has anybody ever looked at videos of like the 1950s or 60s when you've got the, you know, rock and roll singers up there? They were skinny. 
Have you ever noticed? And look at the difference between just the general profile of people when we look at the numbers of obesity and carrying extra weight. Those are very much related to health. So it is increasing globally and it also increases the risk of about 80 different medical conditions. So when we talk about wellness, this is like some things maybe we can do something about, right? So the result is <clears throat> that we end up with toxins inside of us that we don't really know what they are. Some of that can be heavy metals. Uh, Dr. Mario has worked with Tony Robbins personally. If any of you have worked with someone like Tony Robbins, he ended up with, I think it was either mercury or mercury poisoning, I think. Very high level of mercury poisoning. And here's a guy who is like super fit and super focused on health and found out that he actually was, was being poisoned with heavy metal toxins. The pesticides we've mentioned, they are all over the place. And even if we go try to like quote, buy organic, Sometimes we don't know what the definition of organic is because I didn't do a lot with chemistry in high school and college, but those C's and H's have something to do with organic chemistry. So when you think something is organic, it may not necessarily mean what we want it to mean. <clears throat> Industrial chemicals are, I mean, we have no idea what's in this room or what's in this carpet. And I'm not pointing fingers at anything. I don't know what's in, you know, a rental car that you get into. We have no idea what we're actually absorbing. And then we take a look at the pathogens, which may be triggered, you know, in our foods or around us. So, okay. So what we're looking at is lasting lifestyle changes. And so our objective here is to look at some of the things that we could do something about. So <clears throat> let's, let's, is there another one? Yeah, okay. So one of the results of that is we believe there's a need for more wellness education. I think this one's on, uh, okay. So what we wanna do is encourage and support some better diet plans, food choices that we all make. Um, we wanna encourage supplementation. One of the reasons for adding food supplements is because whereas originally we thought, well, I can get everything I need from my foods. First of all, we're probably not eating enough of those good foods. And secondly, that food probably doesn't have everything that it needs. And that's one of the reasons for food supplements that make its 21st century lifestyle, unfortunately. Um, what we want to do is support cleaner agricultural practices <clears throat> and understand what's in what it is that we're eating. And then um, what we want to do is also be available to educate our healthcare professionals. And that brings us to the next slide, which is from a wellness standpoint, our default resource, if you listen to the ads and listen to your grandparents or listen to whoever, is if something is a question, what do we say to do? Go ask your doctor. Now, please be clear. I am not saying don't ask your doctor. And please be clear, we are not saying that that is not a hugely important resource for all of us. We are blessed to be in the environment that gives us access to some wonderful, life-changing, I mean, just dramatic things that are available. But here's what we get to remember is, I think it's the next one, our physicians are educated to treat us because we're sick, they are not educated to teach us how to not come back. Now, does that make sense? And if there are any physicians here, please know we are not, this is not against anyone. This is for us to take responsibility because my job 
is not to go to my doctor and say, how do I stop doing this? Because that's not his job. He's got sick people that need immediate attention. And our job as citizens, parents, people on the planet, our job is to figure out what can we do to prevent some of those things. So are there any other kinds of choices? And I'm gonna give you a couple of stories. Here's one choice. I had never been to a chiropractor, even being around the wellness world, until my son was about three years old, in the summertime, in the water all the time, with an ear infection. And we're about to leave for New Zealand on an airplane at altitude. So I take him to the medical doctor, the, 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 the MD pediatrician with four kids, and he looks at me and he says, let me guess, you're doing all kinds of immune support, <clears throat> and he's still all congested. He said, I could give him antibiotics, but, and this is my MD, and I said, well, what's the but? He said, I would keep on doing all the immune stuff, and I would take him to the chiropractor. Now, <laughs> All I think about is, because I've never been to a chiropractor, I think those are the guys that lay down a table and smash your back, and I got a three-year-old kid whose head is congested. And I, that didn't make sense to me, but that's what my doc suggested. And what ends up happening, I take him to a chiropractor. First thing that happens is all of the young parents that I parented with said, you mean you haven't been to the chiropractor yet and you got a three-year-old kid? And I'm going, oh my gosh, I must have really missed something. <laughs> but I take him to the chiropractor. Here's a kid with his head all congested and stuffed up. And he goes to the chiropractor. Can I use you just as an example? I promise I won't touch or anything. He sits up there on the table, puts him on the table, and he goes like, he touches his forehead and the side of here and somewhere in the back. And, and as I'm sitting there, his nose starts draining and he can start breathing. And I'm going, well, that was interesting. I mean, he didn't, you know, lay him down and smash him or do something like that. And I said, well, what do we do now? He said, I'd go get him a couple of more adjustments like that. And he said, he'll probably be fine. Now, the reason I'm saying that is this may be a new world for many of us. I'll give you a second example, and that is, <clears throat> I have a friend who is a serious athlete, um, was a um, Division I swimmer at the University of Georgia. He was one of the people who finished the Swim for Alligator Lighthouse, um, which is an eight mile round trip, open water swim. He finished in the top 10 out of 400 swimmers. This guy is a serious athlete. He said, man, I am having this problem with sciatica. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I said, because I had the experience before with my mother and with a, an MD friend visiting us, of the chiropractor that we work with, who honestly took care of it. I said, are you open to going and seeing her? And he said, well, where I am right now, I guess I'll give it a try. I said, it's not gonna hurt. And lo and behold, the so-called sciatica, she talks about it's because your pelvis gets rotated, it's off balance, it gets twisted. And what did it do? It pinched a nerve. Well, he's two weeks into going and have that. He has no medication, no nothing. And, and it's like the third or fourth example like that. Now, the reason I say that is we're talking about wellness. So if any of you know people who are chiropractors or have had this feeling about, oh my gosh, listen, they're all different, but that's a possibility that might just be available for us from the wellness side. What's next? How about using people like our massage therapist and also the opening to the next one is, I think, Acupuncture. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't want anybody sticking needles in me. Well, what we might want to do is just be open enough to say, 
there's probably several thousand years worth of science behind that in another part of the world. And it isn't really like you're gonna get stuck with needles, but it does sort of reconnect some things. So being open to some of these kinds of choices, if they are alternatives for us that help to stay healthy, those are some options. Anybody had any experience with acupuncture? Okay, so you can look around. First it's like, oh my gosh, this is really crazy. But then we think about it and it's like a few thousand years worth of that. And then we go to the next one, which is different kinds of non-Western medicine. Um, whether it may be different kinds of herbs or whatever, if you've ever lived out of the country and had local healers who will find things, they will go get certain herbs and certain roots that grow at a certain time and they tell you what to do and whether you boil them or don't boil them. And it sounds weird as heck, but guess what? It probably works. <laughs> really? <laughs> That must be a celebration. So, okay, next one. And there may be some other choices. The important thing is <clears throat> the only choice that we, the, we do not have to rely on the only choice that we have, which is go to our physicians and to use the pharmaceuticals if we are more responsible and open to some other possibilities. So I want to make sure, please raise your hand, tell me, <clears throat> I'm not saying anything bad about doctors. I'm praising them, I'm delighted. I got three of them in my immediate family. They've saved lives of many of us, but it is not their job to necessarily keep us healthy. That's our job. So that's what we're about today. Does that make sense, please? reinforce not saying anything bad this is just what we get to do so <clears throat> so what are some simple steps we can start with well start looking at the ingredients in your food and one of them can certainly be high fructose corn syrup and all kinds of stuff i remember when i was first introduced to this concept there was a thing called the grass list g-r-a-s which is things that are generally recognized as safe. And this goes back decades. Those are the list of ingredients that you don't really have to put on something because they're supposed to be safe. For example, and I don't know what the number is, don't shoot me, but ketchup is like mostly sugar. I don't know if it occurs to us, and I don't know if it shows up on the label, but you know, those are the kinds of things. So check your food ingredients. Um, take a look at increasing the water that you drink and substituting for some of the sodas. And if you like something that's flavored and tastes good, then use an herb tea. Use some of the different kinds of other options. Make some choices to create a non-toxic home. And this is actually where Wanda um, Garcia was actually first introduced. What can we do to get the laundry, the fragrances, all of those things that like smell good and everything? I don't know if you realize, but those things can create environmental stimulations, especially for some of our smaller beings that are taking those things in. And then take a look at using only safe ingredients on your skin, because I mean, we go and buy whatever and put it on our skin, it's the largest organ of our body and things are being absorbed on what's put into our skin. So, this is one quick example, not the greatest slide, but it's something we call writing skills and it's examples of kids who have been subjected to the sprays that may be, and look, I'm not, this is not a label thing, but you know, if you spray Lysol and breathe it in, there are those kinds of behaviors with kids in their writing, with their, you know, being overstimulated may very well be because of things that are in our toxic, in our environment. So we can look at making those changes. 
So where do we start? Well, living consciously. So the first thing we can do is start at home um, and look for the sugars and the hidden ingredients that are in our different foods. It will astonish us. Um, take a look at being more active, moving around. I mean, you know, I guess I'll probably get a few steps here. You know, I don't have my computer with me. My phone is not on me, but you know, how many steps do we get just moving around? Um, try to begin deciphering labels and then find some healthy partners, some people that you can rely upon and say, hey, do you have any experience with this? Can you help me out with this? And that's what we're looking for. So, anything else? So, here's what people say is important to us. What people say is important to them is, they are looking for choices that are safe. How many times every, it, it's every week, something will come across the headlines. The last one was, and please don't quote me if I'm saying the wrong thing, but it was something about, you know, if you use too much Tylenol during pregnancy, it can do something. I don't remember if that's correct, but it doesn't take very long before there is something that is advertised to us that's like, mm, maybe that's not such a great idea. So people are looking for things that are safe and they're looking for things that work. They don't, the worst and most it's stupidest thing we can do is invest in something that's cheap and doesn't work. That is a total waste of money. So, what we know about our customers is that they are smart. They like to do their homework. You've invested a little time to be here today. It's like I'm open to something. And we're also busy. And if we're busy, then we can only spend so much time internet surfing, reading labels, walking into Costco, trying to pull out a magnifying glass. What does this say? Where is this on the label? Is it number five? Is it number two? when we do those kinds of things. And so what we found is that when people are looking for something and they found it, what we will share with you in a little bit, not right now, what we will share with you in a little bit is what some of us have found that are some brands and things that meet these needs. But that's only if, I think there's one more. So if this sounds like you, Stick around, we have a few more stories we'd like to share. Um, but what we've found is that our commitment is to educate people about these kinds of choices. So if there's anything in here that you feel can be valuable for any groups that you know, just to get them to start thinking about um, some healthier choices, then that's what we're about. So I thank you for our first step. Thank you. So what we'd like to do, Wanda, would you like to come up? I'd like to, I guess you do a couple of interviews. Um, and I'd like to just interview Wanda because um, what was it that, that you saw 